Welcome to the New Growth Podcast with Nikki Walton. Join her as she explores divine love as a key to spiritual growth, empowered service, and inner and outer success. If you'd like to support Nikki's podcast, please visit BeHereNowNetwork.com forward slash Nikki. Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of New Growth. I am your host, Nikki Walton, and today is a little bit different. I wanted to start by sharing a project that I know was born of my early morning rising. If you've been following this podcast for a while, you know I started waking up before the sun on November 28th, 2020, and it, in the last month or so, has taken on the additional form of me recording my favorite spiritual practices or the easy access doors into this love so that you can wake up and choose love, that you can wake up to love, wake up as love every day intentionally with me. And so if you have the interest and you want to commit to a new morning routine, you should join me. It's called Good Mornings but it can also be read as God Mornings because the second O is in parentheses with Curly Nikki. God Mornings with Curly Nikki. And you can find it on Apple Podcasts. Please tune in, listen, please subscribe, please rate and review. All of those things help me to be able to spread this message of love. It is a passion project. If you would have asked me a year ago if I would be doing a daily podcast, this one that's monthly felt uh, like a huge commitment. So it's been a very beautiful unfolding. I hope you enjoy it, listening to it as much as I enjoy recording it every day. Again, it'll be available Monday through Friday every single morning before 7 a.m. so you can get your day started right. You can think of it like your fresh cup of coffee, definitely your new morning routine. And so with that, today we have Stephen Jay, a beautiful author, a teacher of the infinite way, which I'm sure you're familiar with now because of me, with teachers like Herb Fitch and Joel Goldsmith, and he actually studied with Herb Fitch, and I'm honored to be speaking with him and honored that you are here to join us. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of New Growth. I'm your host, Nikki Walton, and today I am with Stephen Jay um, of The Infinite Way. He's written several books now about Herb Fitch and his work in The Infinite Way. Um, He's one of my favorite teachers, and I am honored to bring him to you today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here with you on this day. It felt like a miracle when I came across your name and your wife's name late 2020. Um, I'd been, I'd known of Herb Fitch since I'd say December, 2019. I came across his work via Joel Goldsmith. I was doing a search for the wisdoms of the infinite way because I wanted to see if Joel had other talks about how he came up with those wisdoms. They're very powerful for those of you that are interested, um, get his first book, The Infinite Way, Um, the most recent editions, they have that final chapter um, called Wisdoms of the Infinite Way. And so I'm doing a Google search for that. And I come across this very powerful um, talk about the wisdoms by Herb Fitch. And I mean, it was mind blowing, like next level. And so I read that and then I'd started downloading audios that I could find. And so much of 2020, um, I was listening to Herb audios, not just Joel's audios, but his audios as well. And their voices are kind of similar. And so in 2020, I always do Google searches for Herb Fitch's name. And in December, 2020, I came across your books, even condensed wisdoms of Herb Fitch. And I couldn't believe it because there's not much information about him anywhere on the web. There's a couple of people that have shared links and audios, but that's it. So to see that you had shared these books, um, as well as your own teachings, very, very excited. It felt like a Christmas gift. So I'd love for you to speak to how these books came about and, you know, how you met Herb and, you know, how you all work together and in what capacity. Um, For us, it was, uh, my wife and I, we're very blessed that we were partners with this because 
walking on this path, if you do not have someone to share it with, it's a tough walk. It's a tough, tough uh, call to do. And uh, I was blessed to have a partner with me that was right there on every page. We believed the same. We found the same. We we felt like we were, you know, just investigating and and reaching out to to find out what this is all about because life was just not to, you know, grow up and get married, have a family or whatever yeah. you decided. It was much more than that. And uh, we first found metaphysical, of course, that's what introduced us to the way of life. Um, and in the metaphysics of extrasensory perception, astral projection, all the different avenues of metaphysics, we everything we found, we had to read about and really practice this to see if it was real. If it was real, it affected me. If not, I just passed it by. And uh, we did practice everything to make sure that it was real. It was in 1973 where my wife and I were in a library and we discovered a book by Joel Goldsmith, Man Was Not Born to Cry. This book opened our eyes to a whole new avenue. It was like, wow, we, we, we could not believe what we found. We were just so taken in by that. And we, we, we read it with such a ferocity, we could not believe it. We ate it up, basically ate every word that he said. And we started on this path of the infinite way back in 73. Um, we had no idea that it was so widespread because back in New York, um, we didn't know anybody else who studied this way. And uh, we, um, I think it was 1980, we moved to Palm Desert, California. And when we moved there, it opened up a whole new avenue for us because we literally met dozens and dozens of other students studying this infinite way. And from there, we were introduced to a, a new teacher who taught the infinite way. And when she felt that we were ready, she introduced us to Herb Fitch, mm. Herb Fitch's teachings. And that opened up a whole new door again, because his teachings are so high. It's all about the ascension of the soul. And that's what he did for us. He opened up the door for us where we literally flew. And we could not get enough of that also. <laughs> um, every time we, you know, we heard another tape, we were just amazed and we literally just drank these spiritual words, ate them, just digested them to become bone of our bone. Mm. And that's what's important. Yes. It is up yes. to each of us. Every one of us must make this trip, must make this, this journey from sense to soul. And that's the whole purpose of life. Know thyself. Yes. From sense to soul. Can you give the folks at home your quick definition of what the infinite way is according to Joel and then how it was carried further, carried forth by Herb and yourself. The infinite way is um, a way to reach into the higher atmosphere of the wisdom of your soul. It, mm. it brings you to a, a point where you realize that you're, not an appearance of a human being, but you are a living soul, a light being. This is what God has created. This is what lives eternally. And this um, infinite way brings you to that point. Mm -hmm. um, Herb was someone who went into virgin territory. He was not afraid to open up any door to say what he felt. And both he and Joel were the same way. Uh, they were the same in stature. They were the same in, in, in their teachings, except Herb took the teachings a bit higher than Joel had. And that's just what Joel wanted the infinite way to become, to really expand into the higher teachings, the pinnacle of, of spiritual um, understanding. 
Right. Her I read that in your book. Are, I saw that. You said that, you know, Joel said, if it's not carried further, it'll be dead in the water. Exactly. And he, he actually told that to, I believe, Walter Starkey. Um, wow. Who, who, and it, and it's, it is in our book, as you say. Yeah. Um, so it, it's something that everyone has to do for themselves. This is something that no one could do for you. No one could save you from this. You have to do it for yourself. And it's probably the most difficult thing that anyone will have to do on this earth. To oh, yeah. give up the old self and allow the new self to emerge, to, to come out of the ashes like the phoenix. Mm. So for someone that is new to this, that's interested in becoming like that phoenix, what would the first steps be? Like, what would you recommend um, the steps they take to get started on the infinite way? Well, with, with me, it was the man was not born to cry. But I believe any book of that you open of Joel's, mm. because it, it, it's kind of difficult to go from, you know, maybe you're a churchgoer, and mm. but you never heard these principles, you never heard these truths, because unfortunately the the religion of the day does not teach it. Exactly. It's something that you have to find yourself, and by picking up any one of Joel's books. Um, the Infinite Way was his first one. That's an excellent book. But all of them, they all teach the same principles in just maybe a little different wordage, verbiage. That's all. Yeah. But uh, any one of those books will open up do a door for the person to reach out and to stretch. Uh, that's what we have to do. You know, I felt like I was ready for it. I had already been on a journey from much of my life, but like in a deep journey from 2013. And then it was 2016, the top of 2016, I was listening to an Eckhart Tolle talk. And he never really talks about his teachers or who influenced him. But in a very small like forum, maybe 10 practitioners, I think he was speaking with, he shared Joel's name. And I stopped the recording and immediately looked up Joel. Um, the book he recommended was the one about spiritual healing. So that's that was my first introduction to Joel Goldsmith. But when I look back at my Amazon um, purchase list, I bought like eight books in that next week. Um, and one of my favorites is The Mystical Eye. Um, I still love practicing the presence. But I mean, like you said, every book, it's the same message in different words. And I was ready for it because it's, I had already found this felt love, like a felt faith inside and other teachings, you know, like law of attraction teachings and stuff would say, well, you have to feel this joy. And it felt like an act, like I was generating a fake human happiness. And deeply, I could tell that that was not right. And it was almost like Joel was giving me permission to practice this presence that doesn't have to be generated, you know, or held, you know, you just have to know how to pay attention to it, to give it your attention and to give it your attention instead of the thoughts, <laughs> your attention. And <laughs> it just, everything changed, everything changed. And it's still my main practice to this day from 2016, January, 2016, until this very moment, as I sit looking at you, that this has been my only practice. I'm, I see you, but I feel love. I see stuff in this room, but I feel the kingdom. You know, I feel like this invisible source. And that's how I go about my day. I try not to do anything unless I'm in contact with that. Yes. It's, it is really something how <clears throat> when we apply these principles that we study, and it's a daily basis that you do this. As a matter of fact, I don't get out of bed in the morning without knowing the truth of who I am. It's mm -hmm. so important to solidify that before you step out of bed, because we tend to forget. No matter how long we've been studying, everyone tends to forget the truth of who they are. And if they get out of bed as a, a mere human being, then they're going by their own laurels. Yeah. But if they can just take maybe 10 minutes just to solidify the fact of who you are, just know the truth of who you are. Like Jesus says, ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes. That's what we have to do. Know the truth of who we are before we get out of bed in the morning. And then it's the 
soul or the spirit of God going before us, preparing our way for us. Yes. And life takes on a total different meaning for us. Things appear that we need in our life for that day, for that moment. And uh, mm-hmm. it, it could be the simplest thing, maybe a parking spot in New York City or, <laughs> right. uh, or a hotel room in a, in a convention um, mm-hmm. city where every room is booked up and all of a sudden the room opens up for you. Yeah, I mean, this is how grace works. The simplest thing, a bobby pin that you may find, need or something. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. So when you wake up in the morning, Stephen, tell me that process a little bit more in detail. I have a process too that I'll share, but I want to hear like what those words are that point you back to that, that remembrance. Well, the, the first thing I do is I'll take any scripture into meditation with me. Um, I and my father are one. That's a f- phenomenal scripture. Mm-hmm. Just knowing the truth that you and the father are one is the same. And all the attributes that the father has, you have. If you're one with your father, you have the attributes of the father. And yes. we are to, supposed to go forward and live that way. Live righteously. Do everything according to the will of God. This is our purpose on earth, to Mm. follow God's will and to live as a spiritual light being, not Mm. as the appearance of a human being. Right. Even though we appear to be a human being, we must go beyond that. We must overcome that and let that fade out of our existence. Let that just slip away from us. So it's the spirit of God becomes more in us as the old self or the ego self dies. And that's what I say is crucifying the self, not not physically, just symbolically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So for you, is it a feeling? And if it's a feeling, how is it experienced there? Well, when you do meditation, And I would think that happens to most anybody. When you're in meditation, you feel that presence within you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just wells up within you. And sometimes you may hear a voice. You actually Mm -hmm. may hear a voice within your own self saying, this is it, or whatever. Or you may just have a feeling. With me, it's I'll, I'll, I'll see colors in my mind's eye or I'll feel a tingling sensation just running through my whole being from the tip of my toes right through my uh, head. And it's yeah. like it's like a little electrical shocks, but yes. they it's not harmful or anything. It just makes you feel good. Yeah. And you've know you you've made your connection. You're at one with the spirit of God. And you get out of bed, you can handle anything. There is nothing that cannot be handled. Because it is not you who is doing it. It's the spirit of God going before you who does the works. You're just a vehicle. That's all. Right, right. You know, when you said tingling, when you said tingling, it made me think. I posted on Instagram uh, less than a month ago a video where Beyonce was in conversation, I believe, with HBO. And she started talking about what God is to her. And she started to cry. Like there were tears in her eyes. And she's like you know, I can feel it right now. She was like, I'm hot. She's like, I'm tingling. And she said, when I look at my children, I feel God. You know, when I look at my husband, I feel God. And I could see it. You know, I'm like, I don't know if she knows anything about this particular practice about the infinite way, but she's found her way to this because that warmth, that tingling, that vibration, that energy that she's referring to that she feels when she's looking at the world, that's what we're practicing in every moment. Like you said, and it goes before you, the quote I love from the Bible all the time that Joel would mention is to make the crooked places straight. Like I would remind myself of that, like all of 2018, because there was a lot of crooked places in 2018. So, you know, I would live and rest in that truth. And it did, you know, it straightened that path. And here I am today, like this works. Like you said, you and your wife are like, does this work? Is this working? This works. Infinite way changed my life. Yes, uh, it definitely did. It changed our lives tremendously. And uh, it's something how it comes to you when you're ready, because we found it quite by accident. 
Um, we had no idea about this. We could not believe. How come everyone doesn't know this? Right. Why is it, you know, it's a secret. Open you know? secret. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there it is. I mean, it's it's there for everyone who wants it. You know, I always believed in the old adage, you could lead the horse to water, but, you know, it's up to the horse to drink. And Absolutely. that's the same thing with truth, with principles. You could tell the world about it. But if a person is not ready for it, right. they're just going to, you know, just trample upon your pearls exactly. and you don't want that. So you don't exactly. share this basically with the world. You keep it quiet. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you share it with anybody who asks, anybody right. who's really interested in learning about it. They'll see a difference in you. They'll say, wow, yeah. Nikki, you, you're, you're, you're just sparkling. You're so full of joy. <laughs> your light is just emanating from you. Yeah. You know, what is it? What, what? What have you discovered? By all means, then you share it with them because they're yes. interested. They want it. Yes. And they will drink from that, that pool. Exactly. They will drink from the stream. Exactly. So this is what we have to do. And, and it's so important to remember to be grateful for everything that you have in your life. You know, all the things. Don't look at the things you don't have. Don't look at the things because they're only things, basically. But if yeah. you have a someone in your life that loves you and you love back. That's such a blessing to mm -hmm. have that. Um, we, we go through life. No one knows what the next moment's going to bring. But if we're, if we're connected with our God self, if we're walking the path and, and, and feel at one with God, whatever we need in our life will come to us. It will appear in one way or another, in one form or another. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through tests and trials because mm -hmm. everyone goes through tests and trials. You can knock on any door in, in the world and the person's going to have a story of woe to tell you because that's what life is. It's yeah. initiations that we go through. I, I look at life as, as a schoolhouse. And mm -hmm. uh, if you remember when you were in high school, if you didn't pass the course, you had to take it over again. Oh, and it's yes. the same thing with life. <laughs> we don't pass the course. We once again reincarnate and do the whole thing all over again. Yeah. And um, I want to pass this time. Is. I don't want to go. Yeah. I don't want to repeat. <laughs> I want to get it. This time. So, yeah. <laughs> do you think it's yeah. like, is it staying aware as this oneness? Will that help? lead you to graduation like just staying re in remembrance of what you truly are in every moment no matter what the simulation no matter what the dream is serving up to be aware of and in touch with that felt oneness absolutely it is so important to remember i i always tell people identity identity mm. identity it's yeah. such a key word to remember who you are this yeah. is the most important thing that you could do for yourself in your life. Yeah. Identify with your true identity and you walk through life in a different, a different atmosphere. You're, you're lighter in your, your feelings. You're, you, you just emanate more light and uh, you just know things without knowing how you know them. They yeah. just come to you and it's all by the spirit of God. It's not anything we do as an appearance of a human being. But it's to, we, you know, it, it's sad because most of the world population have no idea that the spirit of God dwells within them. They don't know this, even though it says in the scriptures, Paul has told us the greatest secret in all the world is that God has given us his spirit. Yes. This is the, the greatest secret in all the world. Yes. So we have to know this, we have to know, remember this and, and bring it forth. Unfortunately, the human mind uh, takes control of the human being and it rules them through the five physical senses and what I refer to as the world mind. Mm -hmm. Now, the world mind is basically every mortal thought or belief since the beginning of a sense of identity apart from God. Every mortal thought or belief since the beginning of a sense of identity apart from God. So if we can overcome that world mind, which we can by knowing the truth, then it slips away from us. 
and it doesn't have control over us. We are supposed to control ourselves, not the mind, not right. the, the, the mortal mind is the ego, the cardinal self, whatever we want to call it, call it the devil, if you like. Mm. It's, it's all, uh, you know, just wears many different disguises. And it's up to us to come out of the wilderness experience that we have walked into. It's up to us to know the truth. And by living in the principles, by following these principles, it brings us out of the appearance of a life lived in humanness. Mm. It's up to living, us to do this. Living in it. Yes, yes, yes. I would listen and I continue to. Usually I have this one earbud in that I have right now. It's in all day. And Herb is in my ear or Joel is in my ear or a Kirtan music, um, Hindu, like holy music is playing in my ear. Some form of spiritual something is playing 24 seven, like while I am awake and sometimes even when I'm asleep, just to keep me aware of truth, to keep me in truth. You have to inundate yourself with it. And I learned that early on. And to this day, like even though there's never really a moment that goes by that I can forget this anymore. It's still vital, especially in moments where I'm super busy, like in the human world, there's so much going on right now, just to have that buzz there in my ear, like see through this, see through this appearance, see through that appearance, see through this good appearance, see through this quote unquote bad appearance, see through to that love, feel the love that's actual, actually the truth that's here. Yes. It's, it's so important to remind ourselves of that. And, uh, you know, listening to truth, practicing the presence, every time that we meditate, every time we contemplate truth, every time we read something of a mystical literature or listen to a tape of some voice who is explaining and expounding on the principles, mm -hmm. we are lifting ourselves in consciousness. Mm -hmm. We raise in consciousness, even if it's only an infinitesimal amount without any realization of, of, of making any progress, we are making progress. Do not allow the mind to knock you down by telling you uh, it's not working or there's nothing mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It is. If you take a, um, a glass of water and it's filled up almost to the brim and just drop five grains of sand into that glass of water, you will not see the water rate level rise up, but it does rise up. An infinitesimal amount that rises up. And it's the same thing with, with our spiritual principles that we study. That's we good. have to continue them on a daily basis. We die daily of the self. This is our works to do every day. And we have to pull ourselves out of the wilderness experience, sort of like the prodigal son or daughter coming home. Yeah. And this is what we have to do. We must come home to the Father's house. We must get back to our God self, our true identity, and and you know put on that righteous coat and and walk righteously <laughs> yes. and live according to the principles that that Jesus shared with the world. Mm. There's so many powerful quotes that you shared in your books. I want to ask you, and it doesn't have to be word for word, but can you share with us one of the most like vivid moments you have with Herb where he said something that like just hit you, <laughs> like it slayed the ego for you in that moment? Well, uh, I'll tell you, when Herb, when Herb asked me to come out as a teacher mm -hmm. in the infinite way, I mean, I was shocked because I... You know, who am I? I'm, I'm a student also. I'm, I don't know this enough to teach it. And he said, he, he told me basically what Joel told him. And I laughed thinking about it because Herb told me, go and learn. That's just yeah. what, when, when Herb visited Joel back in 63 or, four, yeah, the end of 63, he visited Joel mm -hmm. in, in Hawaii. And mm -hmm. Joel told him, he wanted him to come out as a teacher. And Herb told Joel, he says, I'm not a teacher. I can't heal. People come to you for healing. And Joel said, go and learn. And that's just what Herb told me. Yeah. Go yes. and learn. And, you know, he he just, I felt that, you know, this is something that comes 
by the grace of God, because it's not my doing. Um, I'm just uh, another appearance of a human being. And mm. I'm getting through this life just like billions of others are trying to get through this life. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, her bringing me out as an infinite way teacher was something that I was just so amazed with. And I felt so blessed to be chosen to do something like this, even though I was, I felt so um, not equal to the task at hand. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just something that, you know, her, he just filled me with, with, uh, with uh, knowledge and, and, uh, you know, told me to basically go and do it, you know, just mm. like Joel told Herb to go and do it. Because <laughs> when he asked, when Joel asked Herb to come out as a teacher, Joel, Herb told him, he says, people come to you for healing. I'm not a healer and neither, neither am I. Um, but Joel told him, go and do it, go and learn. Mm -hmm. And that's just what Herb did. And um, Herb, Herb asked me the same thing. And I, I told him, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I haven't really studied this that long. And he said, you go and learn, you go and do it. And uh, mm. I just went out on, stepped out on whatever, just to, you know, do what I was asked to do. And uh, he just sent me out with, uh, you know, his mailing list and, and uh, good vibes and told me, go and do it. And go and do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. And you all like, what I think is cool. And I want to know why I need to know why, because maybe I need to do this too. you, Herb Fitch, Joel Goldsmith, Wayne Dyer, Ram Dass, all y'all somewhere in Hawaii. <laughs> like, why Hawaii? And is there something going on over there that we all need to move to Hawaii to like soak up? I'll tell you, Hawaii is a phenomenal state. It truly is. There are so many things happening here that cannot be explained logically. I mean, you see things that you go, your eyes open wide and you go, wow. And yeah. it's just amazing to, to think that. And it, it's really incredible to think about it, how Joel, Herb, and myself all spring from New York City. Um, wow. uh, you know, Joel was born in Manhattan, I believe, and Herb and myself were born in the Bronx in New York. And uh, wow. all three of us sprang from the Jewish faith and knew nothing, or at least I knew nothing about the Christ or the teachings mm. of the Christ. Uh, neither did Herb. Um, I think I read where I, Joel didn't either, you know. I don't think Joel did either, but we yeah. all studied and, you know, practice the presence, we meditate, we read spiritual literature, and we just mm. had to raise ourselves in consciousness to reach that point where we can say, okay, this is the truth. This is the way I want to follow. This is what I want in my life, because this was an open door to know God aright, to know right. God within yourself. And God it is as yourself, as your truest, this, deepest essence. Yeah. It, to me, it is so important to know yourself, so important to live this way as a spiritual being and to just let the spirit go before you, preparing your way. And it does if you get out of the way. If you can get your ego self out of the way, the spirit just goes before you and prepares it for you. And it'll bring whatever you need in life. But we have to get out of the way. And that's the difficult part for mankind mm -hmm. to step aside. In this society, yes. You know, for all of my, I was raised Catholic and I didn't think there were any answers in Christianity at all, you know, because whenever I would pose a question to the elders, you know, to the priests, they had nothing for me. And so I went on a hunt in all the other religions, the world religions, and then circled back around only because of Joel Goldsmith. And then after finding him, I learned of all of these, you know, Christian mystics, you know, these saints that were talking about non-duality, but not like from the Hindu perspective, which I had already, you know, found and loved. So to see the same principles in Christianity that is not really being taught today, but like back in the day, you know, like Brother Lawrence in the 1600s, sharing about practicing the presence of God. That was really powerful for me to find. And it was pretty far into my journey. 
And I remember going back home in, I think it was 2019 at Christmas. I always go to midnight mass. It's still like Christmas time is my favorite time. And so I'm back at the church I grew up in as a child and the priest is still there. And he's probably like 90 years old now. Um, (laughs) He baptized my kids, you know, he married me all this. And so I sit down at mass, my daughter and I, my daughter sleep. And for the first time ever, he has them turn the lights down in the church and he says, let's meditate. And I'm like, he's never even used that word. So, you know, and he says, come into the presence of the Christ within you. And I, my eyes opened, like while everybody else had their eyes closed. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, like, was, has this always been happening? And I just couldn't hear it. So after the service was over, after mass was over, I went up to him and he immediately recognized me and gave me a hug. And I'm like, Father Bob, how long have you been aware of this presence? And he just smiled like he was beaming and he just shrugged his shoulders and was like, oh, Nikki, too long to even count and just walked away. And all of this time, you know, if somebody would have said like, what about your priest? What do you think about him? I'd be like, he doesn't know this love, this joy, this. No, he does. And it's beautiful. And I I must be here to be able to see it there. (laughs) And so I I was blessed for that moment. Really blessed. I couldn't believe it. (laughs) It's wonderful. When you discover the truth, it is just so wonderful because it it lifts you. It just gives you something that you didn't have before. And and it's it's not for everybody. I mean, most of the world population have no idea that they actually have the spirit of God within them, that they can make contact with this spirit, the soul that they are. And they can make contact with this and really feel the presence of, you know, emanating from them, and it will guide them and direct them through life if they allow it. But the human self has to step aside. It has to get out of the way. It How cannot... do we get that human self out of the way? What's um, maybe like a permission slip or a, a quick, like two or three step by step to help people get out of the way of themselves? Well, the way that I know to get out of the way is by ignoring it and just practicing the presence by reading spiritual literature by meditating by contemplating truth this is so important to do mm-hmm. and unfortunately not many people do it it's something that they don't have or time. start but don't commit they don't keep doing it you know because they they're not commit. seeing those results they keep yeah. doing it. it it's something that happens um and it's up to each individual self to do it for themselves yeah. no one could save you but yourself That's the only one. There's only one. And there's only one self you have to be concerned with, your own self. That's all. Exactly. So if we can, can, you know, practice the presence and we can live this way, um, this is what goes before us, you know, preparing our path for us, preparing our way. But it's up to us to do it. We have to put in the time. And if we don't want to put in the time, then we're just wasting the life. Because all it is is a human life without any substance to it. I mean, you may be very wealthy, you may be well known, uh, you know, but unless you are connected with your God self, it's just a life that really has no basis, nothing to it. God self is what carries us through. And the more we can apply these principles of life that Jesus taught, the more we can, um, you know, just go right through into, you know, God's self and know the truth of who we are. And we are walking at, in that spirit. It's the spirit that goes before us, that prepares our way for us. And that's what our whole purpose of life is all about. You know, mm-hmm. let the spirit guide you. Let the spirit direct. It knows a lot more than we do as an appearance of a human being. Beautiful. I would like to share one of my favorite quotes from Condensed Wisdom of Herb Fitch and just kind of get some insight from you on it. This is from the 1989 talk in Kauai. It says, once we are able to become aware of something more real to us than the illusion of form, once we begin to match up with substance and become conscious of bodies of substance, instruments of substance and receive impulses from the spirit universe, soul senses begin to bud up and we become more proficient in one, two, or three of the soul senses 
and begin to feel a new level of life rising within us. I want to know like what those soul senses are to you. Well, uh, the, the soul senses are the, you know, ability to just know the, the truth of, you know, who you are. It's so important for us to remember our identity and identify with that identity. And the soul senses are your sight or your hearing. Uh, you know things within yourself that you wouldn't otherwise know. Um, mm. It is so important because if we do this, if we can make our connection every day in the morning before we get out of bed, before we even you know, let our feet touch the floor, know the truth of who we are, then we are stepping out of bed as a living soul. We're not stepping out of bed merely as a human being appearing to be right. so, but right. we are a living soul. And when we step out of bed as a living soul, then we're knowing the truth. And it is the soul that goes before us to prepare our way for the day, whatever that may be, whatever may come to us. And, uh, you know, we have to continue it. We, we can't just do it, you know, 10 minutes in the morning and then let the day go through. We have right, to stop right. several times through the day, close our eyes, sit in a quiet place, place and just make that connection again. Plug into your source. Your source is almighty God. And there is no better source to plug into because God will guide us through the day and present and, you know, prepare us for whatever is needed or present whatever we need in our life. Maybe we'll, we need a, a bobby pin for our hair or, or we need a parking spot in New York City on a crowded street whatever it is, uh, a hotel room in a, in a convention hall that's totally sold out, yeah. one yeah. will appear. Or it to does. not miss a flight it, in South Africa. <laughs> I was um, on my way back right. from Africa in 2018, and I got to the airport very, very late. There was a lot of traffic. I had like 15 minutes until they were boarding, um, and the line for security was like an hour deep. It was super long. And so I'm standing there, and I could feel that very familiar way of being Nikki bubbling up, like the fear, the anxiety, the thoughts of you should have left the hotel sooner. All of that was there. But then I remembered. And I do like what Joel says in his books where he's like, he kind of cocks his head a little bit and listens, even though you're not listening for something it's like I'm listening for a feeling. So I always, it's like I kind of look to the side a little bit and then the love is there. It announces itself. And then it's, I promise you, I opened my eyes and I saw a woman, like a security person pushing a gentleman through the crowd and something inside nudged me. And so I just went up to her and I said, can I please go through with you all? Um, I'm going to miss my flight. And the guy that was in the chair, he looked up at me and he smiled and he said, let her come with us. And so- we're making our way. We skip the entire line. You know, they're putting our, our bags through. And I'm like, I can't believe this. And, you know, the guy and I were chatting about our families, about our time in South Africa. And when we get to the other side of the gate and I can see the folks lining up to get on my plane and I'm going to make it, um, the woman like extends her hand to me and I, you know, like gesturing that she wanted some money. And I looked at him and he was taking out a lot of money and he gave it to her and he smiled at me and was like, I got it. And then he stood up out of the wheelchair and he was like, I needed to get through to my flight too. <laughs> so he paid her for both of us to get through that line. And he, you know, kind of did like a peace sign to me, like, you know, go on, go forth with your life. And I thanked him. And that was it. And I was on my flight on my way back home to my family. But I knew in that moment they appeared, but I had to feel that impulse to just go up to them and ask to go through, you know, instead of to stand there helpless and, you know, could have been a coincidence, but it felt like I was spirit moving right there. Well, it's it, more than likely it was not a coincidence. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just things happen when, when you follow your inner self, you can never go wrong. It'll, it may tell you to do something that's strange or yeah. you say, wow, how can I do that? <laughs> you do, do it. You yeah. wind up saying, wow, a lot yeah. because you're exactly. amazed. It just yeah. amazes me. I'm, I've been following this path since the 60s. And uh, we discovered Joel, my wife and I discovered Joel in 1973, I believe it was. 
Yeah, 1973. And we could not believe this. It was How come everybody doesn't know this? This right. is so simple. This is so true. And if you apply these principles, they actually work. They're true. They work. they work. And you should keep your receipts, y'all. Every time a miracle, no matter how small, like you said, if it's a bobby pin you found for your hair or a parking exactly. spot or a flight you don't miss, keep it like in a journal. Take notes. That way, when you're in that moment, that next scary moment, and you're worried about how things are going to work out, you remember that just get plugged back in, get connected, get consciously connected again, and things work out. I promise <laughs> they work out every time and it's never too late. Never too late. It's, yeah. It is amazing how things like that happen. And I'm, I'm constantly amazed. I mean, here I'm, I, I just turned 80 a few months ago and, and I'm no still way. amazed. That, no way. You're 80. Just, you should see how amazing this 80 year old human appearance looks. He's vibrant. He's handsome. He's young looking like I can feel your energy. It's full of love. Like this, that alone, <laughs> like I'm going to keep practicing because I want that youthful energy when I'm 80, if I'm blessed enough to see that. Well, practicing the presence is what brings it to us. Uh, it's, it's nothing special. Everybody can have the same thing because it's for each individual self. That's the beautiful thing about this. We don't have to be concerned about anybody else's life. We just have to be concerned about our own life and just practicing the presence brings yeah. whatever's necessary yeah. into our life. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's something that's there. It's, it, it's you know, no matter what it would be, it's, it's something that's there. Um, yeah. I, I always love to, to feel like in New York city, you could find a parking spot on a street. You know, yeah. if you practice the presence, things come to you, whatever it is, it just, it's brought to you in that way. And it's nothing that you're doing except just knowing the truth of who you are, practicing Mm -hmm. the presence, and go from there. So, Stephen, please tell the audience how they can find you and keep up with you and um, check out your books. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Can you tell the audience how they can find you and keep up with your work and check out your books? Yeah. um, Well, my, my wife and I have worked on and have now published um, through Archway Publishing. It's um, they're the one, the publishers, or you could find them through Amazon or Barnes and Noble, actually. Um, But we have a, uh, we have a website called celestialnuggets.com. And there's all the information about us and uh, six books that uh, we had written and put together. Um, It's um, something that I feel is wonderful for anybody who's searching for something more than the mere life that they appear to be living, because the the spirit of God goes before you and prepares your way for you when you are ready to give up the old self and uh, allow the new self to emerge, uh, sort of like the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's up to us to do this. This is part of our responsibility to know the truth that sets you free. Like Jesus said, Um, this is the responsibility of every individual on the earth to identify with the spirit of God that you are, to let that go before you and prepare your way. And we do this on a daily basis. It's not something that, that we do haphazardly or, you know, do it one day and forget the next this is a daily discipline of the self. Oh, yeah. Moment and the self, to moment. <laughs> moment to moment. For moment me. <laughs> to moment. You're absolutely right, Nikki. Yeah. It is moment to moment because we cannot let our guard down. It's unfortunate that the ego self will try to trip you up. Mm. It does. This is what the ego's job is. Yeah. Uh, trip mm. you up and um, in, in, in different ways, it will, it will do it. And it can do anything. I mean, I'll give you an example, a simple example. Um, I, I was a smoker. I began smoking when I was actually nine years old in New York City. Wow. And um, I smoked for 40 years. So, I mean, I, I smoked and for 40 years. And I finally... I tried to stop smoking many times and I couldn't do it myself. And then one day I said, that's it. And I stopped smoking. And, you know, 
I mean, even though I got urges, it seems like all of a sudden it just, it's just stopped with me. The urges came, but I would just not pick up a cigarette. And, you know, my ego, my, my lower nature of self would say, Oh, go ahead. You had a tough day. Pick a, go ahead, smoke the cigarette. It'll make you feel better. And of course I, I just would, you know, talk it down. You know, I'm not going to enjoy it afterwards. I'll just have a, terrible smell on myself and Mm. my fingers will have an odor and and it's just not going to be good and I just would not do it so it comes down to the point of if you do if you do and you you listen to yourself and you do not pick up that cigarette you're going to be much better off for it in the out in the long run but if you do alter and you do pick up the cigarette then you'll that after you take that first that first puff on the cigarette, Mm. your mind is going to beat you up and say, you couldn't even hold out. Look at that. It it beats you up either way. That's the ego's job. Exactly. That is the ego's job is to, to pull you down back to the earth and, and make you, you know, forget about your true self, your identity and not live as a spiritual light being, but to live as the human being with all the frailties and the mistakes and, all the, the 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 terrible parts that that we have to get rid of, we have to release and just let yeah. go of. It's about that awareness, you know, bringing that awareness. When I was trying to stop my nightly glass of wine, bringing awareness into it, feeling presence whenever that urge would come, like oh, it's five o'clock, it's wine o'clock, you know, and yeah. feeling that love there, um, it's sweet you know, and it is a natural high and just kind of leaning more and more into it. I noticed that the urges started to decline, you know, and that's it's, the way lots of things have happened in my life. Just bringing that awareness, bringing love, interrupting every moment, every moment of the ego, interrupting the ego with love, with God over and over and over <laughs> and over again. Always. Yeah. And, and, you know, meditations are something that could be done and you, we don't have to meditate for long periods of time. We can meditate for two or three minutes just to make a connection, just to plug yeah. into our God source, because that's what we need. We have to do this throughout the day, several times throughout the day, not only in the morning when we get up, but, and of course, you know, at night when we go to bed, the last thing on our mind should be a, a presence with God to Amen. make that connection before we drift off into sleep. And then we are sleeping differently. We are, if we go to sleep knowing the truth that we are a spiritual light being, a living soul, then it's different. Our dreams, our our thoughts are different. We may hear things in the middle of the night that we would not normally hear otherwise. Exactly. Uh, So it's so important to remember who you are, to identify with that identity. That is our whole purpose in life and to live that way as a living light being, a living soul, because that's what we are. That is what God has created, not the appearance of the fleshy being that we appear to be. Anything that God has created is eternal. Anything that God has created is eternal. It lives forever. The soul is an internal soul, and it lives forever. Somehow, along some way along the way, it lost its way and has slipped into into a dual life. It has picked up the uh, the remnants of of living in the world. Um, the scriptures show it that Eve ate the apple. But of course, you know, the, the, the talking snake is basically our own ego is that's the talking yes. snake as far as I'm concerned. Yep. And uh, we just have to overcome that. Do not allow that to rule ourself, but allow the God self to rule us, to, to guide us through life, because it, it will guide us in ways that we know not of. And it will surprise us so many times that mm. we'll go, oh, my God, how am- <laughs> Amazing life is. Yeah. How beautiful. I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And I've been studying this way of life with my my love for, you know, 50 years, more than 50 years now. Mm. So it's, it's just wonderful that it's available for everybody to learn themselves. Everybody has the ability to, to apply these principles if they study them. But it has to be applied. We just can't read it one day and forget about it the next. It has to be 
of practicing of the presence on a daily basis. And that's what that's what's difficult for most people because mm-hmm. they, they get hung up in life and you know it just carries them away in a in a direction that normally they don't even want to go. Exactly. And I love again how you said that this is you don't have to meditate for an hour, for two hours, for even 30 minutes. You need multiple two to three minute meditation sessions throughout the day to reconnect yeah. y'all. So there's no excuse. You can do two minutes every, you know, every hour, every couple of hours. And that's what you need. And you'll notice that the more you practice that, the more it, it naturally arises. Those meditation periods, like your whole life is that those moments of awareness and to the point of there's just awareness, there's just love, not even moments. Um, Thank you so much, Stephen, for joining me and sharing your wisdom, sharing Herb with us, um, sharing everything. I appreciate you truly. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you for having me, Nikki. It's just so wonderful, um, you know, being here and just sharing these principles of life because this is what keeps us going. This is what it's all about. This is it. And thank you all so much for joining me again. I'll be back in a few weeks with another guest and more divine love. I love you all and I'll talk to you soon. Aloha. I received a DM yesterday from a friend named Julie. She wrote, Many say believe. Nikki, you say be love. And I was in the midst of making some plans for travel, um, very expensive plans <laughs> for travel. And when I saw those words, which I don't remember saying them, and I may have never said them, but I definitely feel them and live them. Um, It just, it felt so good that I wanted to share with you all. Like, can you feel that? Like, do you resonate with that? Like, believing in something is a heavier lift than being love in this moment. Being in love, living as love, feeling love, being connected. Like I always talk about being plugged in um, consciously and connected to this felt faith. It's a completely different way to live, a completely different way to exist in this world. You know, you go from survival to actually thriving and flourishing and blossoming in this. And so today's quote actually ties in um, and hopefully the practice will give you a way to move into feeling this love that I talk about all the time in a very conscious way, in a very real way, like in a meaty way, something for you to really be able to sink your teeth into. This is not, um, it is mystical, (laughs) but it's not like woo. -woo. This is, it's very real. It's very real. If you haven't seen that video clip that I shared of Beyonce, um, it's on my feed on Instagram at Curly Nikki and Nikki is with two K's. I think I may have shared it like in March or April, but it's from a clip from her HBO interview and she's talking about this. You know, she called it like a tingling, a warmth. She said that when that she feels it when she looks at her children, when she looks at her husband. 
And she said, it's God, it's love, it's real. You know, and watching that video, having practiced this love, you know, feeling God, feeling good, practicing, feeling good, right? Those words are interchangeable. That's where the title of my podcast comes from. Practicing that, seeing her say that with tears in her eyes, you know, she's like, I'm hot with it. It was very affirming, you know, of my experience here. So check that out. Uh, Today's quote is from Sadhguru's new book. I actually interviewed him on my podcast, New Growth, back in November of 2020. And um, for his book tour, they invited me to be the moderator for him and Dr. Mark Hyman on the Karma of Health. So this is It's really cool. And this is the quote that I shared with him during that interview, because it's the most powerful one, at least one of the most powerful ones for me in the entire book. He says to namaskar yourself into peace, to namaskar yourself into love, into union. Let us put our hands together and unite the world. May you unfold your being with folded hands. Namaskar is the simplest form of yoga, which as we know, means union. Try putting your hands together, bringing both palms together in proper alignment and looking at someone or something with loving attention. In three to five minutes, you will begin to harmonize. Beautiful, right? If you aren't familiar with Namaskar, it's just, it's prayer hands. Just bring your hands together as if you're about to pray. So today's quote is also today's practice. We're going to namaskar our way into a good day, into a God day. And so if you're somewhere safe, let's try this together, you and me. I used to notice teachers like Osho, Eckhart Tolle, um, even Muji, walking in this posture, like walking out onto stage or, you know, amongst their followers. And I always thought it was just like a holy way to walk, like a holy way to look. But after watching one of Muji's videos back in, I think it was in 2018, I believe, called A Few Minutes to Be Light and Free, um, and trying the exercise, trying the namaskar, the prayer hands, I could feel the power in it. And I actually practice that every day for about 15 minutes in my room. Um, I kind of just kind of walk in a circle with my hands in that prayer position and my head gently bowed and my eyes closed. In fact, if you're somewhere safe right now um, and alone so that you don't feel weird, try this. Close your eyes. Gently bow your head. Fold your hands in front of you. And just feel into this. Muji even said, when you're like this, when you're in this posture, when you're in this position, you can't have negative thoughts. Your body is like, for me, it's like you're using your body like an antenna for the divine. You're using this position to feel into your true state into your good feeling, into your God state. It feels like peace when you're like this. It's a very humbling posture. Can you feel that? Practice this today. Lean into this. In that video, Muji said, if there's times when you can't be in this posture, obviously, because maybe you're walking down the street um, or you're with family and friends and you want to appear to be normal. He said, just be like this. Be in the namaskar position inside. So however you're feeling right now, And I pray that you're feeling God, that you're feeling good. See if you can take a screenshot of this feeling inside. Fill it purely and vividly throughout your entire being. And then you'll 
take this feeling throughout the day and paste it over every situation that you find yourself in. So if you have to go to the office today or if you have to go to the grocery store today or if you just got to chill today, run some errands or go to the beach or, you know, play with the kids, whatever the case may be, you're taking this experience, this true experience of yourself, of your beingness, this pure feeling of love, of divine love, and you're going to paste it over every moment. Sitting on the toilet, this love is louder. Walking to the kitchen, this love is more real. It's just a simple shift in your attention from what you're seeing out here in the world to what you're feeling inside. Even if you're feeling upset, that's also on the outside. The upset is there, but this love does not change. And you can use the namaskar, the prayer hands, to come back to yourself over and over again today. Whether you do it physically with your hands or just internally remembering the feeling that you find when you do that. You don't have to do the prayer hands. You don't have to do anything to be yourself. You are love always right now. You are that. And so these practices that I share with you every day, they're awesome permission slips. They're easy access doors to get you back to remembering this, but you don't need them. But until that time comes, we use them and we pick the ones that work the best, that are the most effective, and that changes from day to day. And so I'll give you a full toolkit for you to be able to pull from. This one is a very powerful one. It's why I'm sharing it so early in our time together. So today, whenever you find yourself in a moment that is overwhelming or just uncomfortable, even in the slightest, come back to this. Do it. Take a moment, go to the restroom somewhere where you can be alone and try the prayer hands to use that body as an antenna to come back to love. And then with eyes closed, feeling love clearly, open your eyes, lift your head, raise your chin, hands down to your side, and bring that love you found inside out into the world, out into your experience, out into the office, out into your home, and walk through that love. Be that love. Extend that love. That's the work that we're doing. That's the only work there is. And so with that, I'll leave you to go flourish and have a dope day. I want you to practice love in every moment you can remember. And if you get time and you remember, please go on Apple Podcasts and leave a comment. If this show has been helpful to you so far, let me know what else you'd like to hear, what more you'd like to hear. Um, please subscribe. I love you so much. I'll be right here tomorrow with good mornings, God mornings. I'm Nikki Walton.